Greetings, everybody. Maximus here with more breaking news from NASA and Boeing. But first, let's very quickly recap what we know so far. Test pilots astronaut Bush Wilmore and Sonny Williams launched on the Boeing Starliner over two months ago for an eight-day mission. That was already five years overdue on a ship that was hemorrhaging helium on the launch pad before a liftoff. Yet NASA and Boeing gave it the go-ahead anyway. The mission was only supposed to last a week. Now they're approaching three months stuck in their own astronaut funk-filled space station. Then SpaceX was supposed to launch the Crew-9 mission in mid-August to pick up their Crew-8 for astronauts who have been in space for six months. But now that mission has been scrubbed because NASA needs the Crew Dragon to rescue Bush and Sonny because their bro-packed Starliner is now a useless piece of space junk. So with that rather brilliant summation, if I do say so myself, now the latest terrifying news. Okay, so on top of all the devastating news coming from Boeing and NASA this week, now comes a truly terrifying revelation into why it's taken so long for NASA to make a decision on Starliner's return. And that new revelation has to do with Starliner software. And this latest news leaked by a very reliable source is a really bad look even by NASA and Boeing standards. Three separate well-placed sources have confirmed to ARS Technica Online that the current flight software on board Starliner cannot perform an automated undocking from the space station and re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. So let's quote ARS directly when they say that at first blush, this seems to be absurd. After all, Boeing's Orbital Flight Test 2 mission in May of 2022 was a fully automated test of the Starliner vehicle. During this mission, the spacecraft flew up to the space station without a crew on board, then returned to Earth six days later. Although the 2022 flight test was completed by a different Starliner vehicle, it clearly demonstrated the ability of the program's flight software to autonomously or automatically dock and return to Earth. Okay, so that means that Boeing had to manually deprogram the autonomous feature for this particular mission. But why the hell would they do that? Well, Boeing, of course, did not respond to media questions as to why this feature was removed for the first human-crewed flight test. But still it's not clear what changes Boeing and NASA made to this version of the Starliner software in the two years before the launch of Bush and Sonny's mission. But it looks like that an actual human crew member has to be on the flight deck to manually press an undock button in the spacecraft. Meaning that the automated autonomous software was removed from the Starliner's code on board this mission to simplify its software package and not overstress Starliner's computers. Because that might cause it to blow a gasket and start, you know, like leaking helium or something. But regardless, sources described the process to update the software on Starliner as non-trivial and significant. And in Maximus terms, that means it's really hard and a pain in the ass. But if that wasn't bad enough, it can take up to four weeks to do it. So this is yet part of the reason that's causing the delay to launch Crew Dragon number 9 later this month. So these engineers' grandparents are the ones that came up with duct tape and cardboard to create a life-saving air scrubber in 1968. But here in the future in 2024, it's going to take a month to upload new computer code. Hmm. And if you're a real space geek and were paying attention to a July 25 press conference I aired here on the channel, NASA's commercial crew program manager Steve Stitch actually subliminally revealed this incredible foobar snafu when he was asked by an astute member of the media if NASA would certify Starliner for operational missions if the vehicle returned to Earth autonomously but ultimately safely. And pay attention to his answer. Stitch replied, quote, there are a lot of good reasons to complete this mission and bring Butch and Sonny home on Starliner, he said. Then he added that Starliner was designed as a spacecraft to have the crew in the cockpit. The crew is integral to the spacecraft. So reading between the lines, Stitch revealed that Butch and Sonny were screwed because while my 1973 Toyota had cruise control, apparently NASA and Boeing didn't spring for the extra option on their state-of-the-art space capsule. The ISS has two docking ports available at any time for U.S. vehicles, and these must accommodate both Crew Dragon and Starliner. Of course, the Russians have their own wish holes to Soyuz escape vehicle. I did a video on that recently, I'll post a link. However, at the moment, one of these ports is occupied by the Crew-8 spacecraft, which is due to return to Earth fairly soon. 
The other port is occupied by Starliner. And that makes you wonder, why not just send Butch and Sonny home on the Crew 8 ship? It's been sitting there the whole time. As a matter of fact, on Thursday, May 2nd, the four astronauts of SpaceX's Crew 8 mission moved their Dragon capsule to a different port at the International Space Station. The operation was to make way for Boeing's Starliner capsule, which was scheduled to arrive at the ISS on May 8th. But that didn't happen until June because of yet another delay. But the Dragon capsule named Endeavour undocked from the forward-facing port of the station's Harmony module on Thursday at 12.52 GMT. Then Endeavour autonomously docked with Harmony's space-facing port Zenith at 3.46 GMT. Hmm, that's interesting. Crew Dragon's autonomous. But if any of you rocket scientists out there know why NASA hasn't already used a Crew-8 Crew Dragon vehicle to rescue Bush and Sonny, let me know down below. But back to the emergency at hand. According to one source at the Johnson Space Center, he said a huge concern for NASA is that it cannot afford to quote brick one of his two docking ports, which I'm fairly certain brick is slang for destroy. But for this reason, if NASA decides to return Starliner autonomously, it has to be sure that the undocking software is up to date and will work. However, NASA is trying to figure out how to balance all the potential risks involved. The risk to the Starliner's crew, the risk of an uncrewed departure or undocking from the ISS, and not to mention the risk to all the astronauts on board the ISS. And God only knows what other chain of catastrophic events that could result. But Boeing has been lobbying to bring Starliner home with the crew inside. But while Boeing engineers still don't have a clue as to the root cause for the failure of the thrusters, Boeing being Boeing has been urging NASA to just accept their quote flight rationale as a substitute. You know, like they did with the MCAS. Trust us lying in Ethiopian air, it works so well you won't even know it's there. But Boeing, who still can't seem to learn their lesson, believes it has provided enough data to NASA to be confident the thrusters will not fail catastrophically. Well, I feel better. How about you? All these new revelations came to light last Friday evening with a Boeing press release, patting themselves on the back over all the testing it has done since the launch of the crew flight test. Saying in the release that Boeing remains confident in the Starliner spacecraft and its ability to return safely with the crew on board. Saying we continue to support NASA's request for additional testing, data, analysis, and reviews to affirm the spacecraft's safe undocking and landing capabilities. Our confidence is based on this abundance of valuable testing from Boeing and NASA. However, apparently NASA seems to be thinking much more clearly because it's worried that the multiple small vehicle systems helium thrusters could fail while the Starliner is near the space station and cause a quote disaster. There are any number of Starliner thruster failures that would cause it to become uncontrollable, resulting in a collision with the space station, causing an Armageddon-style catastrophe. Shout out to Bruce Willis. And that risk of catastrophe, of course, is because the thrusters are existentially vital during the descent back to Earth to set up the critical deorbit burn and re-entry into Earth's atmosphere where only the heat shield is supposed to burn up and not the astronauts inside. Wow, talk about going from bad to worse. Well, every day it seems we learn something about NASA and Boeing's Starliner more terrifying than the day before. Well, for now at least, you're once again all caught up on the crazy adventures of Butch and Sundance and their broke-back steed Starliner. But now it's up to you. I need to know your thoughts. Good? Bad? Indifferent? Anyway. But I won't know until you let me know down below. As always, thanks for watching. And until next time, and always, yeah, this is Maximus.